Welcome back to No Man's Sky, The Chronicles. What is it like to lose a parent? When I was around 11, a friend of mine lost his mother. It was the mid-1980s and a routine knee surgery ended with a fatal blood clot. Now I remember being struck by how insignificant the surgery was and also by how sudden everything happened. Now by this time I was already uh, you know, aware of family loss. I had lost my grandfather, but so I was exposed to death, but not with someone who I had lived with, not someone as close as a parent, not someone directly responsible for my well-being. It became a moment of self-reflection as well as observation and how others reacted. Yes, there was sadness, but there was also loss. Now, not the loss you feel because that person is no longer there, but a loss of direction. We are a direct result of our parenting, and the loss of one or both uh, of parents, even at the age of 11, can be confusing. Now, I was fortunate enough to have both of my parents throughout my childhood, and I relied on them without a conscious thought. Sometimes they were alarm clocks waking me up for school. Most of the times, though, they were an ATM. But they were also a point of reference on how to act or to react to a situation. And now, at 43, I am experiencing that loss firsthand. Like I said, it's more than just a loss you feel in your heart. It's also a loss you feel in your brain. And we didn't have Google in my childhood, we had to ask mom or ask dad. If I wanted to know how to do something, short of going out and learning it on my own, I relied upon them to show me how to do it. But in most cases, they ended up doing it for me, I'm ashamed to say. Now, I've often talked about how their generation, the baby boomers, ruined everything for us. And I mean this in the nicest possible way. It's not because of today's messes that I say they ruined us. I say it because they, despite realizing what kind of Promethean parable they became, they tried to do it for the best possible reasons for us. They were born at the beginning of a world war. They watched as their parents had to make really tough decisions in order to make ends meet over the years. It's something they carried with them throughout their lives. They scrimped and they saved. They never threw anything out. They all, you know, everything was either upcycled or cobbled back together, repurposed, or just flat out found a space in the garage for the next 40 years in hopes that they would be used for something one day. And in doing so, with the advancements of the latter half of the 20th century, they were able to give their children a life without want or need. I grew up never having to worry about where my next meal would come from or if I would have clothes for school. We took vacations, albeit sporadically, but we never had a life where I had to worry about what could happen tomorrow, though I suspect they often did. I grew up in a household where I never learned how to do laundry or properly fold sheets. I mean, I went off to college with note cards and an attitude of, well, if I wash and dry it and then immediately put it back on the bed, I don't have to fold it. I, have to, I can skip a step. Things like oil changes and routine maintenance, but what was that? I mean, I, I knew not to ask for maybe a new gaming console every Christmas, with the exception of, of getting it, and for the most part, rather large purposes were shared between my siblings and I. We had an Atari 2600, but it was the giant Christmas present, that one big Christmas present you get, but it was shared across all three of us, and we each got a game. And in terms of dollars in 1982, 83, that was probably close to $300 at a time when we lived on one income. And I never got anything that was really brand new outside of a video camera that I got from my graduation in the 90s and whatever clothes I may have got at Christmas. But I did wear a lot of hand-me-downs until the age of 12 because I had an older brother. Heck, I was 30 before I had ever had a brand new car myself, often getting ones from family members who had passed on or things that my dad had somehow come across from a, a, somebody he knew. He was an insurance agent, so he had plenty of clients that, you know, they were getting rid of cars and they were turning over those things, and he would take on these reclamation projects like they were pirates' pitchers. I grew up on hand-me-downs of most everything, and I really didn't have much to complain about, and I didn't know any better. I didn't know that I should have learned those things. 
Perhaps I was deluded in thinking that if I ever needed anything, I could just call my dad. And I did. Routinely, as both my father and my insurance agent, I called my father for advice on about most things. As a homeowner, I, I never knew how to do most home repairs, although I learned eventually putting in a garbage disposal myself, doing a tile floor, and uh, a hot water tank, but not from my dad. I learned from my then father-in-law. Sadly, I couldn't grow anything in a garden. I was a poor excuse for his son in those regards. The man was a farmer. But I knew how to find the answer out, whether it be through asking somebody who did know or, you know, YouTubing a video on how to change a piece of a dryer that I just did this past summer. And even with that, I never would have to worry about him not giving me counsel and or taking some care of something if he could. I mean, in recent years, I had to replace the roof on this house that I live in, and he gave me some advice on what to do and what not to do and what was a good price and what I should go with as far as a, a type of material. But mostly he just said, are you okay with that? And is that what you want? And that was probably a more valuable piece of advice than just giving me the answer outright. I mean, I thought about it and I responded in accordance. But I also, on top of the house, needed to remove a tree at the time, but the timing was really bad. I mean, the roofers were supposed to be there on, on the site within uh, a week, and I was planning on having this tree done afterwards, but my dad, ever the fixer, had someone just show up at my door out of the blue, and it was taken care of two days before the roofers showed up. I mean, I get the why of what he did. He didn't want the brand new roof to be damaged in a worst case scenario with the tree removal crew if something should happen to fall on it, but the roof needed to be solid no matter what. Even if there was no new roof to be damaged, I didn't want to have to have a roof repaired in any case. In the scheme of things, if the new roof is on and a tree limb crashes through it, it's just as bad as if there wasn't a new roof to begin with. In fact, it would delay it all the more, but he just took care of it. In fact, there were more times than I can remember where he just took care of it. And as much as I hated to let him do it, I would do so every day if given the chance again. And I think he really wanted to do it. The one thing about having a parent like that is that when they are unable to do those things and have to rely on others to do that stuff for them, it becomes heartbreaking. You see, my father was diagnosed with stage 3 squamous. It's a form of skin cancer, melanoma. And it first presented in the form of a sore tongue that he found during a family vacation in 2016. And oh, it was hard enough getting the man to go on a vacation at all. Uh, we dragged him basically away from work. And he took one day and then he decided that he was happier for doing so. But when he came back, we found out that it had gotten worse. It had spread into his lymph nodes. And that was pretty much where the story of my father's taking care of things ended. After having surgery, he wasn't able to really talk in that baritone of a voice and whistling as he walked out towards the garage in his dicky pants and work boots, his head adorned in either a blue or red handkerchief uh, in a bandana form. His advice wasn't able to be communicated as readily as it used to be. Sometimes there was just a shrug or a thumbs up, thumb down. And soon, because of him being on a feeding tube from the damage to his mouth from the surgery, he ended up losing a lot of weight and muscle. And this man, who at 74 was still roofing a barn or baling hay at a farm or tending to cows, all while being an insurance man during the week, was unable to do the physical fixing that he was so known for. He mostly sat in a chair sidelined from doing anything and watched us do it for him with his supervision of course and that was the worst part of it all because he was stopped dead in his tracks and i still needed those advice and those things to be fixed when they broke and the biggest thing that needs fixing now is my heart but i am lucky to have had that life with him or maybe would it have been better to have had to do all those things myself and him not fix anything? That's the real question, I guess. Am I a better person for it? I get that everyone needs some instruction now and again, but I remember a few years ago when my own daughter began playing games like Fallout 3 and Skyrim 
for a little bit and then at some point turning over the controller to me and saying fix this or complete whatever quest she was on and I just continued on playing it and that's how I got sucked into playing Skyrim of course and I wasn't even teaching her how to do the things that she needed to do I was just fixing the issue and again <laughs> I remembered how I felt at 11 when my friend's mom died but what did he lose when she was gone did he end up doing his own laundry make his own sandwiches get up himself in the morning or get himself up in the morning for school was that something he had done for himself before or after? And then I snapped back into this present and remembered something I used to do for Bailey. Sometimes I used to just take my hands off the wheel and let her figure it out. Sometimes it was better to just let her fail and realize what she needs to do to fix the situation than to do it for her. Now perhaps that was just a built-in reaction to not wanting things to be fixed repeatedly by my father or just that I was lazy, I don't know. Still, I took care of things that would result in a bigger mess for me to have to fix. Like, I would make her some lunch or food or whatever, or, or put some things away that could lead to her making a potential mess. And sometimes it was just easier for me to do that instead of letting her fuss around with things. But am I one of the lucky ones? Yes, I am. Not because I was in my 30s before I realized what maybe rotating your tires meant in terms of tire life or when to water my garden which is in the morning by the way learned an important lesson I was today years old figuring that one out but because I learned that someone who was willing to do all those things is great it's not on me to know how to do those things it's on me as the observer of other children and the interaction level with their parents to know what I should have asked for as far as instruction it's on me to know that I had what very few have had in this world, and that is someone who has loved me enough to make sure I had never had to worry about anything. Someone who was willing to fix things. Someone who sacrificed so much that I could just sit here one day and write something like this on top of a video game's footage instead of me not having any opportunities at all. I am so very lucky. And if you have someone like that, please count yourself lucky. And please show them how much you appreciate all they do fix while you still can.